Hey guys, and welcome to E2. Um, today is a little bit different, and also the videos are going to be a little bit different. So we're chopping off the podcast and moving that to its own video. But I realized I forgot to film an intro. So today's topic is going to be a little bit of a heavier topic. But just know that um, as these videos progress, they're for your um, information, they're for your help, they're for your, you can use it for, you know, looking back to uh, looking to get biblical standpoints on these subjects. So today's video is actually going to be more about divorce, but not in the fact of the breaking, brokenness of the family, but how to deal with the actual turmoil of it in a biblical standpoint. So enjoy the video. Um, I'll let a Pastor Adam Myers continue it on. once in a while we try to tackle some tough subjects. Before we get to that, I would like to give you a little tool, a little gift, that if you are trying to figure out if there is somebody that you want to know better, you want to maybe become friends with them, maybe you want to date them, there is one question that will let you know everything you need to know about anybody you want to know anything about. Here's what it is. What kind of shows do you watch? That's the question. You, you, you learn a lot about somebody when you figure out what kind of shows they watch, whether it's Netflix, whether it's YouTube, or whether it's anything else they're streaming. You want to know something about somebody, ask them what kind of shows they watch. All right, so let's just do it. What kind of shows do you watch? Just give it to me. What are you, what are you watching right now? Flash. What? Flash. Flash? Flash. A lot of people like Flash. That's well, a big thing. Like I, I don't really watch it. I don't, I don't have an opinion. I'm going to say I didn't like it. All right, Mel, what else you watch? What? Grey's Anatomy, yeah, that's the, they're getting ready to do the last season. Grey's Anatomy, only for like 25 years. Supernatural, okay, okay. What else? Ken Burns, The Civil War. Ken Burns, The Civil War. There we go. We got a fan on the stage, okay. All right, all right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about a show, and it's, it's kind of a newer show. Um, maybe you've not seen it before. I'm not even sure if it's gonna really make it out of the, the first couple seasons, but uh, it's a show that I started watching, and when I started watching it, it just kind of blew my mind away, and I'm, I'm a little addicted to this show. You probably never heard of it. Have you heard of Stranger Things? Yeah. And then, I mean, I don't know if it's gonna make it. I don't know if it's gonna make it. Stranger Things. Um, anyway, Stranger Things. Not to ruin it for you, but Stranger Things takes place, it's, it's a bunch of cute kids in the 80s who grow up to be awkward middle schoolers who ultimately save the world from, spoiler alert, these like squishy, weird looking aliens who are from another dimension, okay? Now, now the thing about the show that's so interesting is this other dimension is called the Upside Down. Now, the Upside Down, it's exactly like our world, except... It's a little bit darker, and it's a little bit scarier. And so this is like the whole premise of the first couple seasons that you get into it. And uh, it's a great show. I really like it. And so when I think about The Upside Down, um, it reminds me of some things in our life that feel like they're upside down. Things that feel no they're supposed to be normal, but it feels a little different. Like, for example, if you've ever changed schools or changed semesters of class, and so you go to school... And it's the same school, but you've got a different class. So you walk a different way. You're with different students. It's this weird upside down, right? It's the same thing, but it's kind of different. It feels like the upside down. Or maybe here's one that's a little bit more, more relatable. Like you've got a friend group that's pretty solid. And then all of a sudden, one of the people in that friend group kind of goes MIA for whatever reason. Maybe they get in trouble and there's not a lot to hang out with you or maybe they're just super busy with sports and extracurricular stuff or maybe, unfortunately, they get into a relationship which is like the friend killer and then now they're seeing somebody else instead of hanging out with you guys. For whatever reason, they're just not around anymore. So you got your one friend group. Everybody's kind of hanging out but it doesn't feel like it's the same thing because it's a little different. It's like this upside down. So today, I want to talk about something that feels like an upside down, something that happens to your life, and it changes things, and 
People want to act like things are normal, but things aren't really normal. So today I want to talk about divorce. I want to talk about divorce today. Um, so hey, what's up, guys? Uh, so divorce um, is a really interesting thing. I'm surprised that we don't talk about divorce more than we do because uh, statistically, we know that half of all families will experience divorce in one way or another, which means this, at the very least, divorce has affected somebody that you know or somebody that is around you. And so for something that affects all of us, it's also crazy that we don't really make a big deal about it. So divorce has become such a common thing that it feels strange to even talk about. Like, why are we bringing up the, this issue and this idea of divorce, which is why most of the conversations that we have divorce are really just conversations to state the fact that a divorce has happened. But isn't there just something weird about that? Doesn't it feel strange? Divorce is a big deal, and it changes a lot of things, but yet it's so strange that when divorce happens, everybody works really hard to try to make sure things aren't different. And so it feels like you're living in the upside down, and there's this weird feeling like, I don't think things are supposed to work like this kind of of feeling, and if you've ever felt that way, experiencing divorce at any kind of level, whether it's happened to you personally or happened to someone that you're close to and it feels weird, you're right. Divorce is not what God wants for marriage, and divorce is not what God wants for your life. And so today, we're not going to talk about your parents, and we're not going to talk about the decisions that your parents have made or parents of people that you know have made, because um, God is not here to bash on your parents, and I'm not here to bash on your parents. That's not what today's about. Today's really about you and how divorce affects all of us. And it's asking the question, what do we do when families deal with brokenness? Because here's the thing, everybody's family is going to deal with brokenness. So even though today we're talking about divorce, it's not even completely a divorce issue. It's really a broken issue. Brokenness issue. What do we do when we deal with brokenness? Because every family goes through brokenness. And here's the thing. When you go through brokenness in your family, big things happen to cause that brokenness. And when big things happen, your relationships with the people in your life change in a very big way. So with divorce, and and for some of you all that's been through it and are going through it right now, or you've got people that are going through it, you're going to know what I'm talking about. Some of the big changes that happen in divorce is you actually start to see your parents as people. Like there's this thing that happens when you grow up and you just think your mom and dad are superheroes. Like they're just nothing can break them or touch them. And they're just, they know everything. They're good at everything. If there's a problem, they're going to figure it out. There's no way they would ever bring anything into your life that would hurt you. And then all of a sudden divorce hits and you realize that mom and dad, like they've got some problems. And we say this a lot from the floor. We're going to keep saying this from the floor. Listen, your mom and dad, they're doing the best. And they struggle through life just like you. The only difference between them and you is they're in bigger bodies and they've lived a little bit longer. But they're still going through awkward things. They're still trying to figure things out. And as you change and as you struggle, they're going to change and struggle with that. But one of the things that happens with divorce is you start to realize that my mom and dad, maybe they're not superheroes anymore. Maybe they're just people who are struggling and there's problems. And that's a big change. Maybe one of the big changes that comes into your life is that uh, your relationship with one of your parents starts to change significantly. Divorce comes in all shapes and sizes, and sometimes, unfortunately, divorce happens because one of the parents makes some really bad life decisions. And when you start to get in on what those life decisions were, you start to resent that parent, and that looks different. For some people, divorce happens, and you've got a parent that just completely checks out, and they're out of the picture, and they're gone. Some of you, you experienced the tragedy of seeing that happen. And some of you, that happened before you could even start getting memories. And you just kind of grew up in a space where that one parent wasn't there. Or maybe that parent is still in your life, but what they did is very fresh in your mind. And you have a really hard time with the fact that they brought some things in that broke up your home. One of the things that also changes is the fact that you probably have to start taking on more responsibilities. That unfortunately, coming from a divorced home, you're going to have to grow up faster. And if you've got siblings, you might have to step into the role that was vacated by one of your parents, which feels absolutely impossible to do. As a matter of fact, all of those scenarios feel impossible to do. Like it's hard to look at your mom and dad as real people who struggle through real things. It's hard when this relationship you have with one of your parents is changing. It's hard to try to be somebody that you're really not equipped to be. And so the question in the middle of all this is how are we supposed to? to deal with this reality that we can't control because 
That really is what happens when brokenness enters your life. And your situation might not be a divorce situation. It might be a, a completely different kind of situation. Maybe a sickness situation. Maybe a death situation. Maybe a job loss situation. Uh, whatever your brokenness is, it creates a reality that you can't control anymore. And it kind of feels like an upside down. Because everybody, like, isn't it weird how everybody's scared to talk about what the problem is? Like everybody knows what's happening, but nobody wants to say it out loud because we think, let's just pretend that everything's normal. Let's just try to make everybody feel okay. But the truth is, it's not normal. Things aren't okay. And how do I live in this reality that I can't control? And so in Psalm 46, uh, there's this poet who writes some really powerful words of what we can do in broken moments. And he says this, God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. And what I want to do with the rest of our time is I want to take this first and I want to walk through it with you. Because here's the truth. I don't know what you're coming with today. And I don't know what divorce means when you hear the word. And I don't know what brokenness means when you hear the word. And I wish that I could... Um, Man, I wish I could just like take away all that pain that you feel. But I can't do any of that stuff. But what I can do is I can point to the Father. And I can point to God and I can, I can try to give you some things to hold on to. And I can try to help open a path that you can run to Him. And so He says, God is our refuge and strength. An ever-present help in trouble. Disruption is hard. Like when brokenness enters your life, it creates chaos, it creates confusion, and it creates change, and it creates this season of trouble. This is the whole point of this poem. The author is trying to get you to understand that the God of the universe, he cares about you. He cares about what you're going through. He cares about the pain that you're feeling right now. He is an ever-present help in trouble. Now listen, I've been in church long enough to understand that when you hear the word that God cares about you, to some of you, that's hard to hear, and for some of you, that's even harder to believe. Because you probably prayed some prayers, like, God, bring my parents back together. God, uh, fix this situation, and then it didn't happen. And it's easy to think, well, either God doesn't love me or God isn't real. And I just want to lay this on you. Just because you don't believe something isn't true doesn't mean it's not true. The scripture tells us that there is a God that cares for you. There is a God that loves you. There is a God that is always there in trouble. Because then the author says this word, therefore. Therefore is this really interesting word. It's a powerful word. Therefore is, it means that because of what was said, this is, this is what's going to happen. So because God cares for you, because God is ever present, therefore, and we get these four words that if we could just get a hold of these four words, I think it could do a lot in the middle of our brokenness. The four words are this, we will not fear. We will not fear. Why? Because we have a God that cares for us. We have a God that's there. We got a God that knows my problems. He knows what I'm going through. He understands my heartbreak. God cares for me, so I will not fear. I will not fear even when the earth gives way. So I don't know what your brokenness is, is like, but maybe you're in a situation where you feel like the world is literally crumbling around you. And all these things that you thought were safe and all these things that you thought were sure, they're gone. And I want you to know that, that even though those things are happening, we will not fear because even if your life feels fragile, I promise you, and even if everybody is quitting on you, God will never quit on you. God will never quit on you. Even right now, if you don't even feel him, and you're like, I don't even know if God's real. I, I just feel so empty. I'm promising you right now, God loves you too much, and he won't quit on you. So we will not fear when the earth gives way, and we will not fear when the mountains fall into the sea. Maybe there are things that you thought were always going to be there, and now they're gone. And everything in your life feels fragile. I think it's why some of us in this room have a really hard time trusting people. Because the most sacred trust we had with our mom and our dad got shattered through divorce. And now we think, I can't trust anybody. And I just want you to know that even though if all the relationships around you feel fragile, God says all throughout scripture that he's stronger than all those things. That there's nothing that can break the God of the universe. And so the psalmist, he understands these things. He says, God is an ever-present help. 
in the middle of my trials, in the middle of my pain, in the middle of the things that I'm going for. Therefore, I will not fear when the earth shakes. I will not fear when the mountains fall into the sea. And what happens is this. At some point, you start leaning into your faith and leaning into God more than you're leaning into the things that you can't control. And there's this change that happens in you. And I can't tell you exactly when that happens or how that happens. I'm just telling you that the more you press into God, the more you pray, the more you believe that God has a bigger plan for your life, the more you believe that God won't leave you, the more you're going to start to change. And all of a sudden, you actually start to look at your problems and you actually kind of start to say, just bring it. Because I love what he says here next. He says, so let the oceans roar and the mountains tremble. Like it's this amazing shift. He said, listen, I'm not going to be scared of these things anymore. I'm not going to let them take away my peace. I'm not going to let them take away my joy because there is a God that loves me. And he says he's always going to be there for me. So you know what? Just bring it. Just bring it. Whatever it is, just let it come my way. Let the oceans roar. Let the mountains tremble because there is nobody bigger than my God. And that's the only thing I can give you today. That's the only thing that I can give you. The only thing I can give you is this truth that that God is real and he is here and he can get you through anything that you're going through. Even for some of you, you're going through some things right now. Jesus would tell his disciples in the middle of of this really deep conversation about pain and about hurt and about uncertainty. He would speak these words that we have uttered thousands upon millions of times over the last thousands of years. Jesus says, I have told you all this so you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. Listen, it's not if you get hit. It's not if you go through stuff. It's when. Everybody in this room is going to go through something. You're going to go through brokenness. And for some of you today, that actually is divorce. You've been through divorce. And for some of you, it's been ugly. And I'm so sorry. We get so mad at God because we feel like somehow God's abandoned us or dropped the ball or let us down because things have happened. But Jesus never promised life was going to be perfect. He never did. As a matter of fact, he says, I promise you, you're going to go through stuff. But then he says, you can take heart because I've overcome the world. He's like, what you're going through? Jesus has been through things, hard things. Jesus has lost people. He's seen people make really bad decisions that destroy other people. He's seen people quit on him. And he's seen people never come back. He's been through all that. And he says, you can take heart because I've overcome it. I can get you through it. What he's saying is that you can have peace. You can have peace. So, listen, you may not be able to create peace with your parents. But you know what you can do? You can create peace with your dad by being nice to him and being kind when you're around him and choosing to be the better, the bigger person. And you might not be able to change your mom's living situation right now, but when you're with her, you can just speak words of kindness. And you can be patient and you can understand. And you might not be able to help your siblings get through what they're going through right now. But you know what you can do? You can be a safe place for them that's consistent and that's loving. Because when it comes to peace, you are either the exception or the expectation. The expectation is that there would be peace. That's the expectation that there would be peace. And what happens is because we go through stuff that's broken, we say, well, you know what? I'm not going to live in peace. I will be the exception to what God says. I will choose to live in distress and I'll live in hurt and I'll live in pain and I will continue the cycle and I will be mean to people and I will be hateful and I will not be trusting. And I'm telling you this, you go down that path and you make that a part of your DNA and who you are and then one day, One day you will become the thing that you said you would never become. And that's the people that hurt you. Or you can be the expectation. You can choose to live in peace. Listen, God has done everything to clear the path for you to do you. Because that's all you can do. That's it. 
You can't control your parents. You can't control your siblings. You can't control the brokenness in your life. You can't control the people that hurt you. You can't do anything for somebody else. But you know what you can do? You can do something for you. You can choose peace. You can choose to be better. You can choose to love and to act and to be everything that Jesus was. And, and, and if you dig deeper into the scriptures, Jesus will tell you it's not even going to be by your strength. So if you're like, I can't do it. You're right. You can't. But he can if you just let him take over and you let him work through your life. Because all you can do is you. That's it. And because of that, when it comes to your family, I promise you, peace is always possible. Peace is always possible because you can bring the peace. You're either the exception or the expectation. And I'm sorry for some of you in this room that are dealing with some brokenness right now and just saying the word divorce has just brought up some scars that hurt. But can I just say this out of love? Just because someone hurt you, it doesn't give you the right to hurt somebody else. And it doesn't give you the right to stop caring and to stop loving and it doesn't give you the right to quit. Your life has value. The God of the universe who cares for you gave his life for you so that you could have peace. I love the fact that Jesus says you can have peace in the middle of trials and sorrows. Peace is possible. Are you the exception? Or will you choose to be the expectation? That choice that will change you, that will change your friends, that will one day change, change the person that you choose to spend your life with, and that will one day change the little tiny people that you will raise to make this world a better place. It's time we broke the cycle of pain in our lives. It's time we chose peace. So, the word father is a hard word, right? Because we say that word and it's going to mean different things to different people in the room. I said this when I was praying, but we like to reflect our fathers on God. Listen, our fathers and our mothers and the people that raised us, they're not perfect. Just like you are not perfect. And God is not a reflection of all of that. God is the perfection. God is what it should be if there was no sin and no brokenness. And so we have a song like Run to the Father and it's this reminder that in the middle of your pain and your hurt, there's a God that loves you and cares for you and is here for you and you can run to him with whatever you've got anytime you need him. Run to the Father Fall into grace Done with the hiding The reason to wait Heart needs a surge this is the outro video get it i'm walking out um i want to say thanks for watching if you can um on our socials stop by say hello um and then while you're down there uh consider subscribing and uh we will uh see you next week and don't forget to enjoy the podcast listen to that too that has some extra stuff for you guys so uh we'll see you next week